And today, uh, Luciana will talk about a very interesting topic that uh, I think has not really yet received the proper attention in responsible innovation discourse, and that is gender, uh, how we look on gender, do gender affects how organizations or stakeholders perceive or act in RRI. Um, and uh, so far, I haven't seen any publications on gender and RRI, but maybe I oversaw something. And I think Luciana has the best competence uh, to talk um, about this. And with that, I just think I will give the floor to you, Luciana, and we are looking forward to your presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Good mo For me, it's good morning. It's uh, 8 a.m. here in Brazil. It's a very uh, huge pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, well, uh, I will start talking about, of course, RRI, and uh, in the end, I will uh, can share some information about uh, our uh, cl uh, climatic challenge nowadays. Uh, well, this um, I I'm going to present um, research about two papers that I presented uh, at the SPIN in 2023 and 2024, because we have the uh, SPIN Connect in Porto Alegre uh, in beginning of uh, April. Well, the, the title is Unveiling Perspectives, a Gender Analysis of RI. But the look um, specifically, specifically is not uh, how companies are dealing with that, but how we researchers are dealing with that. Uh, of course, we have uh, a huge discussion about how uh, gender or how diversity impacts innovation and mainly innovation management. And uh, it is uh, one side because we know that his historically, uh, we have uh, always have um, um, a preeminent uh, man uh, uh, management of, uh, in industries and companies uh, at all. But in the other side, we have this um, contribution about RRI that exactly advocates gender equality uh, in research and innovation development. And uh, we can see, we, we can show you that women are considerably involved in RRI research. Uh, a huge uh, example is Tatiana that have a lot of uh, studies and uh, uh, it's a very influent researcher uh, about RRI. Um, we based our analysis uh, considering that the imperative to integrate uh, women uh, into research initiatives uh, has uh, garnered mounting attention and um, it is as underscored by, for example, uh, Runga and Etnovit and Pinho, uh, it's our recent studies. Uh, it will discuss or uh, inserts with the principles of research and uh, responsible innovation and um, championing uh, gender equi uh, equity uh, with scientific endeavors and uh, reflecting the ethos uh, about a survey that was conducted in 2023 from um, to gauge the perspective of male researchers on RRI. The first uh, uh, study I presented in Ljubljana in 2023 that uh, is only uh, taking a look about the, the perspective of women researchers in RRI. Uh, I uh, have help with more two colleagues. Silvania, that is uh, now a PhD student in Brazil, that uh, this uh, her, her thesis uh, worked with RRI. And Denise Genari, that is a colleague here from uh, also from Unicinos, and uh, she um, is uh, in charge of the analysis because we uh, use it a software to make this qualitative analysis of the, the, the studies. And uh, Denise was responsible uh, to run that. Uh, we started this, the, the first paper um, looking for that. How is a responsible research in innovation seen from the perspective of women researchers? We uh, started from a bibliometric research 
and the second step was uh, using Uramutec to to make a hierarchical decreasing classification method uh, that will analyze the the all the studies and uh, bring us uh, highlight some uh, some uh, results. We started uh, using um, Web of Science database and uh, we found uh, 1,606 articles. We excluded some of them because uh, they are uh, anonymous editorial or duplicates or the gender not identified. That was a very uh, hard uh, search because we have to list all the names of the, the authors and identify if it was a man or a woman. And uh, we have some problems because some names we cannot understand if uh, what gender can be. Uh, and we we excluded the those articles. In this, the, when we run uh, the second article, we uh, contacted some authors to to confirm the the gender, but uh, some uh, didn't answer us, and we have to. Um, exclude uh, some um, articles uh, in the same way. Well, uh, after excluded, we analyzed uh, 100, sorry, 1,560 uh, articles uh, to the bibli bibliometric base. And then we um, saw that we had uh, that number of uh, articles that, that were mixed authorship, men and women uh, working together. Uh, we have only um, 302 uh, articles that were exclusively uh, uh, women authorship, and we have only men authorship. We analyzed to the uh, using Ramtech. We analyzed uh, the only the women um, authorship, and uh, we exclude, excluded uh, 22. Uh, because they are not uh, entirely in the, um, they, uh, we, um, sorry, they didn't have the abstracts at the Web of Science, and we worked only with uh, 281 uh, articles. Uh, the data from the bibliometric research, we can see that most of the, the, the studies are articles, 55%. Uh, we have a number of authorships in these studies. 25% is uh, one, um, one, only one author in the article, and the following by um, the green one, it's six uh, uh, authors or female authors in the, sorry, authors in the articles. It's here they consider everything. We have the most uh, articles published at the RRI uh, 2016 International Conference uh, of RRI, followed by, of course, the Journal of Responsible Innovation. Uh, when considering the, the um, Web of Science categories, we uh, saw that 54 article, uh, 64 articles were categorized in ethics. Uh, followed by social science, computer science, business and managing, management, and green and sustainable science. Of course, it's the major uh, uh, categories. And about citations, it's an uh, important um, information because women have only uh, 1,738 citations in contrast that men have more than uh, 6,000 citations. Uh, and the period of the publication, we have, uh, we have here 2017 uh, to nowadays, uh, the, the period that uh, most have uh, publications. Uh. And when we started that analysis using Ramutec, that it's a hierarchical decreasing classification method, uh, we analyzed 281 um, studies, including uh, in the software, and the, the software processed uh, 1,348 uh, uh, ECUs. What is an ECU? ECU is a unitary, uh, unitary um, content in entity. 
that are fundamental elements in content analysis, allowing a structured approach to understand textual data. The ECUs represent units of information that may vary depending on the context of the analysis, such as words, phrases, themes, among other textual uh, elements. And uh, it uh, existing 1,417 uh, elements. And here we have the the first uh, uh, image that the Mutec uh, show us that the, the um, articles, they are separate in three classes. Because considering uh, I, I'm not an Iramutec uh, expert, uh, because, that, because uh, um, that's why we have uh, Denise with us, because she uh, the the one that runs it. But the results, we can uh, see that considering the uh, all uh, abstracts that they, we run on the Iramutec, they uh, are the Iramutec separate it in classes. And um, we can see that there is a proximity in the class one and class two because they are in the same um, column in the, the graph. Uh, and it configures an axis. In content analysis, the classes represent thematic groupings or category, uh, categories of textual data. Uh, they are created to organize and understand different aspects of the text corpus and help researchers uh, to identify relevant patterns, trends, and insights. Um, of course, here we can uh, not have uh, the whole information about every class, but when we can see here, it's all uh, the same uh, Iramutec uh, um, output, but the uh, Iramutec don't uh, name the classes, don't name the axis. It's the um, researcher uh, work. We had to analyze the, the articles that uh, Iramutec uh, selected to class one. And of course, uh, considering the issues, the terms and the, te the terminologies that they, uh, the Ramutec um, highlighted, we can see that most of the, these articles, these studies, are about governance. Uh, in the class two, we can see that most of the, the this, um, articles are about uh, are in interdisciplinarity. Uh, they uh, bring uh, different uh, perspectives of RRI. And uh, we can see that this axis that uh, we, the first axis, we call it interdisciplinary governance. Uh, on the other side, we have the class three that we can see that it's about performance uh, on RRI. And of course, we name it the axis with the same uh, name of the class. It was the first presentation, the first study that we did. And when we are presenting uh, this at uh, SPIM in uh, Ljubljana, uh, some people asked us, but um, how men and women, what, what are the difference between the research about men and uh, women? There are a difference. Then it um, uh, inspired us to a second uh, uh, study. Oops. That uh, is the name of the, this webinar that is unveiling perspectives of gender analysis of RRI. We presented that uh, at uh, SPIN in Porto Alegre uh, next April. We did the same, but we run again the web of science because we uh, understood that uh, there, um, of course, have had the new uh, articles, new studies. Some of the studies didn't appear again in the web of science, but it's a, a little, uh, it, it was a few. We uh, follow the same steps, a bibliometric research, and then uh, we run Iramutec. We started with uh, 1,700 uh, uh, articles. We excluded uh, 33 because it, we cannot, when, um, sorry, we cannot uh, define the gender of the authors. And in that time, we sent a email from the authors asking him, asking them to, to answer us if it's a man or a woman. And, uh, but, one of uh, a few of them answers about that. 
uh, ah, here we we included the information that I didn't have in the first one that we research in Web of Science well, with the keywords totally open, only responsible research and innovation or responsible innovation. Uh, then we run the bibliometric based and we separate the, the authorship considering the genre. And uh, we can see that we have more more or less the same in the first analysis, a, a, a percentile of 20%, around 20% of the, the studies uh, are made only by women. And uh, But of course, when we consider men and women working together and the works uh, only made by women, we have more, the, the majority, we have like uh, seven, more than 70% of the, the studies, and uh, we think that it's very a positive uh, result. Then uh, we excluded some of them about the women uh, articles, and we analyze it uh, together, men and women articles, uh, but only men authorship and only women authorship, uh, not uh, considering the mixed one. Probably it can be the next step if we can uh, uh, follow the, the idea. And uh, considering the, the entire uh, universe of the articles that we analyzed, we can see that articles are uh, uh, still the main um, form, type of documents that we can find. And um, that time, Journal of Responsible Innovation are the first one that uh, source of the, the studies, followed by the uh, RRI in 2016. And uh, then with a different uh, volume, uh, the 2021 um, IEE. Um, about the publications, of course, the time is uh, almost the same. And here we have the same uh, problem that we saw the first time, that's about the citations. Men uh, still have a huge number of citations, uh, more than the double of the women uh, citations. And here we just need um, did a, a cloud, uh, word cloud. And of course we can see innovation, we can see research, we can see technology as the main uh, terms. And now running the, the Damutech, uh, what we can see uh, that different from the first, first one, now the Damutech show us uh, five classes, not three like the first one, because here uh, they are considered, uh, I'm not sure because we have more, uh, much more articles, but because the, the kind of the articles. Uh, considering um, in Amotech analysis, uh, we, do, um, we, don't, we don't know exactly why uh, Amotech did that, but we um, input uh, 704 studies, but in Amotech only analyzed 703 when uh, it didn't run. And uh, they pro uh, it processed the, this number of ECUs, the terms that uh, um, in the total of um, 3,000 uh, ECUs. Here we have uh, the classes and the axes. Uh, uh, as we can see here, the first one, the, we have class five, it's a, a, an axis. And we have class one, two, three, and four, one uh, uh, another axis. We have only two axes here. Uh, and then analyzing each class and the, the totally of the axis, we can see that in the first, uh, the first axis, we um, name it uh, as emerging technologies impact. A lot of studies are uh, working and dealing about that. And the access to it's uh, um, mainly about anticipation. A lot of studies are uh, working about anticipation. Uh, just uh, connecting with what we are living here in Rio Grande do Sul, 
uh, we need more anticipation here to predict the uh, environmental uh, catastrophes like we are uh, dealing now. Uh, and when we compare the genders, uh, the Ramutek didn't uh, show a very significant difference in the speech from men to the uh, women. And that's why we didn't um, uh, run uh, it in different ways. We are thinking that, okay, if we have some difference in the, the, the speech, we can only run a, an analysis for men and run another analysis for women and compare what are different in this speech. But uh, once the, the Dermotech didn't show that uh, significant difference, uh, we can see uh, um, an image uh, in the next uh, um, <clears throat> uh, picture. Uh, we didn't run it separately. Uh, there's a very small uh, words, uh, some of them I, I couldn't uh, read, but uh, we, what we can see here, it's the gender similarity analysis. That's why we consider that don't have different uh, in the, the speech between the genders. What we can see here in the gray, in gray, some of the terms that do not show a significant difference. In red, they are significantly or, um, of the female gender, and in green, the male gender. And uh, we have more uh, analysis in the fall in the sequence, but we can see that uh, we don't. We have a lot of terms that are in gray that is the the are same for women and same for men. That's why we consider that we don't have a significant uh, difference between the, the speech. Uh, and when we consider the, we, we bring, we, we extracted from the figure uh, in, this, um, in this chart, uh, the, the main uh, terms that uh, appear when we consider women uh, researchers and men uh, researchers, uh, research, sorry. And, uh, <clears throat> It's a it's a list. Of course, it's some are uh, some uh, terms are a little bit strange because, for example, in women we can have article as a term, but uh, it's a it's the way Iramutech uh, um, run the the information. But we have something very uh, interesting here. For example, about education, about the student, about policies. Uh, and the same we have uh, uh, in man uh, column about, uh, um, for example, in uh, industry technology, uh, open open innovation uh, about political uh, uh, that are related with policy, for example. Here are uh, the 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 separate context, and here we can see that okay, there is a, a little bit difference between the studies uh, running by only women and uh, studies run, uh, running uh, specifically, uh, specifically by men. And uh, when we uh, understood that, okay, don't have a, a, a huge difference between the studies, what we can um, highlight from uh, our analysis, what uh, can, we bring from a, a different perspective. And uh, here we go uh, in a different way. It's not only on, uh, looking for the gender analysis, but uh, we look at uh, where are the RRI studies are leading us. And uh, in that case, what we did, we selected the most relevant studies of each class. Uh, now I don't remember uh, the number of the studies that we analyzed, but it's more than, 200 yeah uh, and we use it elicity that is a ai tool uh, that is very nice to use i don't know if you know that that's very nice to use to um, to to help to to highlight uh, information from uh, from articles they don't uh, the, the the tool don't analyze anything they don't uh, make a, a chart uh, with the main information and information that you need, that you want uh, to, to extract from the articles. And uh, then we 
prepared né, a, a framework uh, to, to highlight that. And here, uh, what we can uh, organize it, um, considering the, the, the information that are extracted uh, from uh, elicity, we could um, separate the studies, the, the future studies, uh, in four, um, four, four um, pieces or in four, four v, uh, different uh, paths that are, uh, are going. The first one is analysis of the impact and social implications. Uh, and uh, for example, we under, uh, um, saw uh, st suggestions uh, that we'll do about exploring societal, uh, societal change uh, changes due to the industry for the for, uh, for point, point zero. Uh, studies about ethical implications, uh, for example, in uh, epigenomic research. Investigation uh, suggestions of investigate conflicts of interests in auto autonomous systems uh, to analyze the impact of different sources of income of well-being of seniors. Uh, the other, the other uh, group will deal about applications and adaptations of uh, in different context uh, contexts. For example, in AI in healthcare. Uh, new concepts in healthcare here, mostly in, in healthcare, um, innovation structures uh, in healthcare, and investigations about the impact of uh, platonic technologies in different contexts. The third one is social engagement and public participation that uh, deals with the promotion of collective democratic checks on extremity connectivity, uh, investigation about the impact of societal. Uh, societal engagement uh, on addressing social challenges, uh, studies about the integration of public engagement resulting in pol political decision maker, making. And the, the last one is about the development of methods and approach, uh, suggesting the, uh, developing methods to extract knowledge teams from science fiction, for example, to explore the generalization of uh, PVE. Sorry, I don't remember what this, this does it mean. Uh, that result across different contexts, uh, implement scientific, uh, specific process, uh, processual conditions for societal uh, challenges and investigate strategies for um, forming uh, truck platoons. What we conclude considering the, the both uh, studies that we run? Uh, of course, first of all, we want to, to, to thank you for all women that uh, are dedicated to, to study RRI. And uh, we are uh, sorry because uh, some of them uh, were excluded because we didn't um, um, define the name if it was correct. But we can see that uh, uh, research on RRI demonstrates a significant engagement from female researchers, uh, as we can see, uh, mo mo more than seven, um, 70% of the, the, the studies uh, are developed or uh, only with women, by women, or both women and men. The practical implications of this study underscore the ongoing necessity for uh, increasing uh, female participation in research uh, related to responsible innovation, as well as the uh, beneficial impact of gender diversity on research outcomes. And here is the uh, main point, to encourage the participation of women in, student, uh, in studies of RRI and uh, to suggest that research centers, universities and governments uh, create incentive mechanisms to do that. We understand that uh, there is a lot of um, um, actions and uh, companies that are uh, in increasing and stimulate uh, girls in science, for example. Uh, here in, in, in Porto Alegre, in São Leopoldo, we have SAP, the, the, the company, uh, technological, uh, technology company, and they have this program to, to bring uh, girls to, to um, uh, technological uh, undergraduate courses, for example, because uh, we understand, they understand, and uh, here uh, in the university, we, uh, we agree with them that it's very important when we have uh, women and men developing a, a, um, a software, for example, because we have 
complementary uh, point of views, and it's uh, very uh, important to bring them uh, to the science and to, te uh, to technological ways. Uh, here I, I finished my presentation. I think that it's important to have some time to, to discuss it. Thank you so much. Here are my contacts, and uh, I'm glad to, to talk a little about uh, gender in RRI with you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Luciana. It's uh, really lovely yeah, to have you here and to, to listen to this topic. Do we, I mean, I have some questions uh, to Luciana. Obviously, I think it's a very interesting topic, but uh, maybe others also have some questions before I jump in. Yeah, okay. I think Agata was first and then Joachim. Regarding the, the, the research, I find it honestly uh, fascinating and f fantastic to see that um, that you've been researching this topic in a deeper way. And obviously, with every uh, each research, uh, more questions um, come up. Um, and I was wondering, um, from the methodology that, that you use, it seems that uh, for the exclusion um, criteria, uh, um, excluding the mixed papers, and I understand the logic behind, but I'm also wondering whether uh, in the in the presentation and in the paper you were also able to discuss a little bit of the limitations of those uh, due to those choices, because I think to to a great extent, obviously, um, we academia is a very uh, challenging um, mm -hmm. uh, kind of creature, and we know that public publishing is also very challenging um, because of the structures, uh, because of the of course. Um, some areas are uh, and domains are very male dominated uh, also in terms of the um uh in terms of the hierarchy and uh, we know that uh, sometimes the papers are obviously um you know the first authors might be uh, women but then all the other uh, uh, authors, co-authors might be meant because of the um, structure within the organization. So I'm just wondering if you were um, also uh, looking into this as part of the limitation and acknowledge uh, this in some way or thinking about this. Um, and then I was also, uh, so that was my first question about this limitation and kind of highlighting perhaps the structural, uh, you know, challenges in terms of publishing um, and the role of, of, of women and men um and then the second question um i was also wondering if you're considering uh um using other types of methodology uh, so in addition to uh, more of the uh, quantitative methodology to explore the topic and i would be curious whether uh, perhaps like uh, more in depth discussions interviews focus groups with uh, mm -hmm. Leading, um, leading authors to explore a little bit exactly of those very uh, delicate topics sometimes in terms of the publishing and, and leading uh, roles in RRI. I, I think that's, that's, uh, those are my two questions. And thank you so much once again for the, for the research. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Uh, well, about the first one, about the, the publishing limitation, I think that... Uh, yeah, we don't know that. We we just uh, imagine that because, of course, we we sometimes uh, we suffer about that. But it's I think that it's not the 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 main problem. I'm, it, it's my opinion, okay? Uh, because we can see uh, nowadays that there are a lot of um, um, uh, expressive journals. They have uh, women as editors. And I, I, I really sincerely hope that they have a, 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 a main role uh, and in stimulating and accepting uh, um, women uh, works. But of course, we, it, it's something very interesting that we can uh, try to, to see. And I think that the, the way to do that is connecting with the, uh, trying to answer the second question, because it's um, doing some uh, in deep uh, interviews, for example, to understand uh, why uh, too much um, uh, articles are uh, making uh, are uh, published with uh, men and women together. Uh, it's because they are partners. Uh, we we can we have some data about that because uh, we didn't uh, run that, but we can have uh, tools that can run about the um, like the network to see, okay, they just published that article together or no, they are 
they have a, a lot of uh, researchers together, but we didn't uh, have time to, to run that. And I think that it's very interesting. We can do that and try to highlight uh, some points about that. But yes, we understand that uh, it's a it's um, a code analysis only uh, running uh, uh, the Ramotech analysis, uh, and uh, maybe we can go to that uh, that uh, way, thinking about uh, talking to people and understand why they are doing that. And you give me a very nice uh, idea to to understand the uh, for, uh, have some difficulties to publish also. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think, Joachim, if you are still inclined to ask a question, then you are welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Luciana, for the um, presentation. And of course, we hope that things are get better in Brazil. Thank you. I was just thinking, trying to think uh, critical in the uh, methods. And I was thinking that if it would be interesting, if you can give us some um, your thoughts about the possible bias that might have had the fact that many men who are interested in uh, responsible innovation have already a gender a consciousness and that can in some way have um, changed the, the results if you have been uh, focusing on another topic for example would you agree in the first place that many men may have that uh, gender consciousness you are aware of it and what do you think about that uh, affecting the, the job? Thank you. Um, it's a very nice question because I, I don't know I don't know how to answer that. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, it's only my opinion, okay, but I think that uh, it's not only a, a, something that happens in our life. Because um, trying to 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 search some um, uh, articles that deal with that, what we can see that it's a discussion in uh, in uh, in technology, in engineering, uh, in uh, hard uh, uh, hard art areas that it's uh, mainly men that do that, and I I think that it's uh, historical as the same that we have in other uh, uh, areas. Uh, and we have some areas that um, are more, um, more. Uh, we have more women involved, like uh, education here in Brazil, for example, or uh, I don't know. Yeah, now I can just uh, think about education. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't. I don't have an answer uh, based on data. <laughs> it's just my opinion. I don't know if I. I correctly uh, answered you. Yes, of course. It's just that um, I think it's interesting to see how that bias might affect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, the fact that many men might think that they have uh, gender consciousness when in practice they really don't have. So, of mm -hmm. course, trying to see that and being critical to it is very difficult. Mm. And I was thinking maybe sometimes uh, even women can uh, have this bias. Because I don't know, uh, for example, I have some, uh, um, all the papers that I uh, wrote about RRI, it's only with women. I don't have a, a male partner about RRI. Uh, and uh, I don't know, maybe I, I can have, we, I can uh, have to, to find one and uh, have some uh, diversity in the discussion. Maybe it's, it can fix. Uh, fit for both sides, both sides. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Luciana, now I think I can ask my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few. Um, first of all, I'm really thinking that the topic is just the start. We have so much to explore from how like people publish in RRI into what they publish about and uh, if there are differences between uh, men and women, for example, leaders in the organization, and because of that, maybe practice of RRI is different, um, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, how they execute this, how they organize, uh, and, and so on, because 
uh, it resonates with other fields uh, like uh, female research in entrepreneurship and innovation studies that shows, for example, that female are more inclined to um, service innovation rather than technical innovation, and they um, like to involve stakeholders into entrepreneurial mm -hmm. process while males maybe in a less extent and so on. So there is also parallels that could be made to other fields. But uh, in terms of your paper, I was really thinking uh, it's interesting that males have twice as much citations and females. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe with your data, you can explore in what outlets male and females have published. Because in this Web of Science, you, you showed us, right, the table, there were some conference proceedings and there were mm -hmm. some very highly ranked journals, mm -hmm. uh, like a quarter, three or four. And well, my assumption is that perhaps male authors publish in those, you know, high top quality journals, while maybe females publish more in like uh, conference proceedings or mm -hmm. lower uh, quality journals. Uh, I think just something that you can look at in your data, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very yeah. possible to do that. And it's a very nice uh, insight because uh, we didn't look to to in deep to the citations only the the huge number mm. very nice thank you um yeah that um uh, there is one um another one was now i of good but but one thought that um also agata said that perhaps you can combine uh, like a quality quantitative analysis with the help of this software tool with some other things and in my view, you 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 could also have a look on the, um, I mean, with the help of the software, you were able to look on semantic analysis, so what words mm -hmm. they're using, but you wasn't really looking into a topic, main research questions, methods. Um, mm -hmm. You uh, top your uh, like uh, already found and categorized articles with uh, some uh, manual or maybe I co-piloting tools to explore what research topic, what methods do these gen different genders use? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, perhaps you can find some differences if, if uh, I don't know, if males really looking into that area and females on the, in another, I don't know, I don't know. But I think maybe there are possibilities uh, without conducting interviews. Well, that's obviously very interesting as well because mm -hmm. it's a totally different angle. But just working with the secondary data, you can also do a lot. Um, and the last thing that I, I'm, I'm just maybe misunderstood, but your analysis was only for the males and females. So you excluded mixed, right? Yes, yes. But in the end, you are trying to build a framework for where responsible innovation research has a gaps and where it needs to lead us. And then mm -hmm. you excluded one third of the articles that were written. Yeah. Maybe for that part of analysis, you mm -hmm. should mm -hmm. use the whole of it. Mm -hmm. That was my immediate thoughts, but I think, yeah, mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah, I think that about the, 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 the way that our eye studies are, are going, uh, yeah, it's a totally different uh, analysis. Don't, uh, we just, we are just working with the data and think, okay, once we didn't have the result that we are is expecting, and I think that it was nice, but uh, okay, let's analyze um, the suggestions, the, the future suggestions. But yes, of course, uh, uh, if we, uh, want, we want to do a, a hard analysis, we can, uh, we have to use the entire uh, study, the, the entire hold of the studies. Mm -hmm. I I appreciate a lot your suggestions uh, about the methods. I think that we can uh, have some uh, insights, very very nice, uh, very important. And uh, I think that nowadays is easy because sometimes, uh, for example, for the methods, we also can use uh, the. Um, the um, uh, AI to to do that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. one of the the selections that we can have is exactly the methods, and it's 
it's Beautiful. nice and then, okay of course we have to analyze it uh, later uh, but uh, the the software can extract that the 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 tool can extract the the information yeah i can see uh the message from agata but you can actually talk mm -hmm. yourself <laughs> <laughs> thanks tatiana I was actually uh, reflecting a little bit on the pers on the understanding of gender in RRI as well, and I think that especially for um, for people who work in the European context, especially uh, EU funding um, in the RRI context, the gender is uh, very often understood as uh, just really uh, supporting women. But I think that we are really trying to open up and really think about gender, not only in the context of women, but really diversity. And I was wondering if, if and perhaps it's niche, I don't know how, uh, I honestly have no idea how does it work in the research world, uh, how many researchers really, uh, you know, uh, are open, uh, are confident about expressing their gender uh, in, in different way, uh, way than just saying I'm a woman or a man. But perhaps there is also a niche, top, a niche question about um, perhaps there's something in between women and men and uh, how this research includes. That's something that uh, mm -hmm. I, I was thinking because recently I've been working on, on um, EU projects that include, um, they focus on uh, European Green Deal and we're looking into um, the, the question of, of course, supporting women in, in transition, uh, in just transition. But we were actually looking also in the diversity of, gen of, of genders and how different people in vulnerable positions positions um, uh, also uh, find themselves in specific situations. So that's something perhaps niche in terms of the researchers, mm -hmm. but uh, thinking maybe here about this one as well. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, talk about something that when I was presenting uh, for you today, I, I understand that we didn't highlight uh, and we don't know exactly where are the, the researchers. Uh, if most of them are from uh, Europe, for example, that we understand that have more um, uh, incentive for for uh, for research, or they are different uh, places like Brazil, for example. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, look that we can do. Uh, of course, we don't have all the information because sometimes, uh, uh, for example, we can. Uh, Publish from uh, here from Bruni Sims, but I have Tatiana with uh, as a co-author, co and uh, with it can be a um, a, a query or um, a survey that we can do with the researchers. Very nice idea. Yeah, or if you have possibility, then you can mm -hmm. of course identify them on um, LinkedIn or something. The people mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. have. Um, their country of origin, right? Because we also, yeah. in academic community, you can be sitting in, I don't know, US, but you come from Poland or whatever. You, mm -hmm. you never mm -hmm. know the country of origin of the researcher. Yeah, yeah. Judging by affiliation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you are. Can we have, uh, I think, the last question because we are approaching the end <laughs> of this meeting. Just a, a small comment. I was thinking that something interesting could be also the future perspectives as you have done in different difference between men and women of um, risk perception. If there are mm -hmm. some evidence that sometimes there's tendencies between men and women that are different in how they perceive risk. So mm -hmm. if there is really something there, it could be something that you can do with your data maybe, or very relevant. Mm -hmm. Perfect, great, great suggestion. Because yes, I think that have literature that uh, uh, brings about the, the ris risk conception in different uh, genders. Uh, I just can say that from uh, research on entrepreneurship, uh, at least I know that there are differences mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. uh, and quite considerable. And uh, and if the assumption is that because uh, female um, more risk aware, uh, they would not send, for example, their articles into highly ranking journals because they fear they will be rejected while male just do this and get published, mm -hmm. then that could be some moderating kind of, right? Mm -hmm. but maybe it's not for that paper, but I think idea is interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank uh, you so much.